Hello and welcome to Tesca Technologies Private Limited. My name is Shivam Vijay. Today in this video, I'm going to give you a demonstration on flow, feedback flow control. Hello and welcome to Tesca Technologies Private Limited. I am Shivam Vijay. Today in this video, I'm going to give you a demonstration on feedback flow and level control trainer. In this system, we can understand the feedback concept of controlling a process which is a level and also the flow for this system and we will also understand the determination of system response and also we can understand the controlling of PID potential integral proportional integral and derivative control for the system in this uh, feedback controlling and then we also see, see the SCADA controlling of the complete system as well. First, I will explain you all the parts of this system completely one by one how the plant mimic is designed and how it will work and all the sensor and other components can be also understand by using and working with this complete trainer system. Then we will see the practical performance on the complete system and also we will communicate the complete system and observe and monitor the system with the SCADA response as well. The order code of this system is 52241. You can use this order code to find out all the specification and other details about the system by visiting our website which is www.tescaglobal.com. First of all, we start with the plant mimic diagram presented on the front panel of the complete trainer system. In this feedback flow and level control setup, we have introduced the level tank. The level tank is directly connected to the sum tank. The outlet of the level tank is going to the sum tank. The sum tank is also connected with a centrifugal pump in which we can fill the water completely about 50 to 60 liters and then the water can be flown through the centrifugal pump through the wall V1 and using the wheel flow meter which is a transmitter here to sense the sensor. Also the flow will also going from the pneumatic control wall and this is the main component that we have to control for the controlling flow. Also this is also used to control the level as well. Then this is a bypass wall V3 here and this is going for further for through the rotor meter and by rotor meter can be used to observe the actual flow in the Benol readings. Then the complete system is going through the level tank and also the other part is directly going to the sum tank also. So there are two lines which is going level tank and sum tank in both. Then these are the red lines are for the electrical connection which is giving here. So electrical connections of level switch is directly going to the panel. Also that level transmitter switch connections are going to the panel. Then <coughs> air compressor line is connected with the AFR unit, electro-pneumatic converter and then pressure gauge through electro-pneumatic control wall. So these are the AFR or air lines and red wall will be the electrical signals. PID controller setup and panel is described here. We can also see inside the panel to communicate and communicating and other parts of controlling the system as well. Now starting with the front panel, we have a PID controller. The PID controller is electronic PID controller with LCD display in which two display of process value and set values are displayed in two different sections. Then the PID controller can get input of 4 to 20 milliampere from the transmitter's output. We can use the level transmitter output or also we can use the flow transmitter output to the PID input. Then the input of the PID controller is, uh, sorry, the output of the PID controller is provided to the electro-pneumatic converter. For both the system, electro-pneumatic converter is required to control level as well as all the flow. Then this is a dual display for PV and SV and bar graph display also displayed on the lower side of this complete screen to check the output of the percentage output of the system. These are the five switches to set the PID controller as per the system requirement. Then we have mains on circuit switch here. This is the rocker switch for mains supply on. Then this is a pump on rocker switch. This is the 24 volt power supply on switch and this is the PID controller on switch. Then this is the toggle switch. So we can select while working on the level or flow by using this toggle switch up and down. Now we are going to see inside the panel. You can open the panel by unscrewing the 
panel bolts and then using this handle you can easily open the front panel and see what inside it now all the parts inside the one panel are showing right now so this is the mcb here the single pole mcb to turn on and off the complete system so this need to be in on condition whenever you working with this these are the terminal box all the incoming and outgoing wires from the panel are can be easily managed and connected with the terminal blocks and also this is the relay to protect the level switch while working with the level switch the level transmitter or level in the level measuring tank will not exceed from the exceeding limit so that level switch will control the operation of motor in on on and off condition then this is the signal isolator here the current from the transmitters in the 4 to 20 milliampere range will be isolated from the PID controller the same value will be provided on the output as well but in the isolated form then this is the SMPS which is required to operate then uh, all the sensors and other values which are working with the 24 volt DC supply so this can convert the input from the 230 volt AC to DC voltage of 224 volt power supply in the 3 ampere range so in the industrial field the 24 volt power supply is required most of the sensors will work on the same supply then this is the USB to UART bridge converter so for communicating the data from the or communication of the PID controller through the SCADA so this bridge required which is connected with the USB cable provided with the complete system as well so this is the USB cable which is connected from the UART bridge the USB cable can be connected to the PC and these are the patch codes for connecting the transmitter output to the PID input and PID output to the tra transmitter or level controller output as well then this is the back side of the front panel this is the PID controllers back side all the connections and terminations are described in the wiring diagram as well also you can understand all the system by physically as well then this is the level transmitter over here you can see this is the level transmitter and level tank the level transmitter is situated inside the level tank this is a capacitive type level transmitter so it will work as per the water level across the road or the capacitive probe is the changes if the water level is changes the capacitive value of the capacitor uh, capacitor transmitter level transmitter will changes accordingly so the level tank has the capacity of 0 to 500 mm to fill up the water and it is made of polypropylene material with the transparent sheet you can easily see the level through the level tank using this then the system of the level measurement is directly summed or the water level from the level tank is directly summed to the sum tank which is connected directly behind beneath the level measurement tank now this is the level tank the dimensions of level tanks are 12 inch in 12 inch height in 12 inch width and 12 inch in depth the level tank contains about 50 to 60 liter water for doing the experiment purpose and you can easily drain out the water by drain wall behind this and the level tank is directly connected to the pump the pump has the capacity of 0.5 hp and can throw flow up to 1000 liter per hour or more than that about 1200 liters per hour and this is the wall which can be ball wall so that the water flow can be controlled and uh, increase and decrease by turning on and off the flow of the or the position of the wall then we have a wall, wheel flow meter here this is the transmitter which sends the flow when the water flow through the line is passing through the wheel behind this will start rotating and uh, it will cut an infrared rays of uh, the sensor and the frequency of the cutting the infrared rays or the wheel passing through the infrared rays will measured and approximately on proportional output is provided to the 
PID controller in the current form or in the voltage form whatever is required in this system we are using the current form and it can measure from 0 to 1000 liters per hour and at 0 it will give 4 milliampere and at 1000 liters per hour it will give 20 milliampere output so this is analog output so which is required to see the level to the PID controller as an input then this is the rotameter here the rotameter can measure the level or the flow of the water flowing through the lines and the rotameter can be measure the value of flow from 100 liters per hour to 1000 liters per hour which is its maximum range as the water flow going through the inside you can see through the glass tube the puppet will be situated any of the position as per the flow and we can measure the actual flow from the rotameter as well then this is the electronomatic section in which all the pneumatic components are provided so this is the AFR unit from air compressor supply we have to provide input at the AFR unit at this slot using a 6 mm PU fitting you can easily connect the PU fitting using the PU tube and this is the pressure gauge with the AFR unit as well so the air filter regulator unit can regulate the value by turning the knob to clockwise and anti-clockwise and uh, the filter unit can filter the air from the moisture content will be filtered when it is passing through the AFR unit and regulation can be seen on the pressure gauge as well output from the AFR unit will be provided to the electronomatic converter this device convert the current value to the electronomatic value in the PSI and when we provide 4 to 20 milliampere current from the PID output to this system or to this device the device will convert the value according in the proportion to 3 to 15 PSI of the range so the 3 to 15 PSI range output will be directly given to the globe type of electronomatic control wall when the wall air is provided through this inlet the wall will be start closing this is the open condition and this is the shut condition the wall inside there is a diaphragm which is connected with the road and road or spring and the road and spring are connected with the complete setup here you can see the setup will close when air is inside provided on the diaphragm the diaphragm will move and spring and uh, the wall and the road will goes down and the wall opening of the system will be closed so that's how the automatic control wall work according or the exact pressure will be provided according to the output and the set values from the system and the system will close and open accordingly to change the flow rate of the system or the water and this is the complete flow line here you can see the flow from the flow meter is going through the electronomatic wall so whenever we require to change the flow rate the wall will be operate and flow will be disturbed and uh, manipulate according to the set value then these are both the walls to open the flow from the pneumatic control wall or if we close both the walls the wa water can be through go through bypass line which is by opening the wall v3 through the rotameter through the sum tank as well or if we require to do in the level measuring tank as well so that was the complete description of all the parts and items in this complete trainer system and the all plant mimic is also explained in this description and the complete setup is installed on a sturdy ms frame this is a powder coated ms frame so the complete system is very tough and uh, easily to move by completely turn the system wheels are also provided with this frame so that you can easily move this in your corridors and other rooms to rooms wherever in the labs and the institution at your place and wheels with the lock mechanism is also provided lock mechanism so that you can uh, lock the system while working with this so this will not in movable condition and you can easily perform your experiment with this now we are going to perform the experiment on the complete trainer system for first experiment we are going to study the closed loop control system for flow in the flow we are using the wheel flow meter as a transmitter for the flow system and PID controller will be the controller for the controlling output of the complete feedback closed loop system so first of all while performing the experiment we have to follow the procedure as given in the user manual so first 
प्रोसीजर इज रिक्वायर्ड टू सेट प्रॉपर अरेंजमेंट ऑफ हैंड ऑपरेटेड वॉल्स विच आर बॉल वॉल्स वॉल वी वन वी टू वी फोर एंड वी फाइव नीड टू बी क्लोज एंड वी सिक्स वी सेवन एंड वी एट नीड टू बी ओपन सो वी आर गोइंग टू सेट अप वॉल पोजिशन एज पर द यूजर मैनुअल एंड देन वी सेट द पैरामीटर रीडिंग्स इन द पी आई डी कंट्रोलर एंड वी स्टार्ट द सिस्टम बाय आर प्रोवाइडिंग द एयर सप्लाई टू द इलेक्ट्रोनोमेटिक कंट्रोलर एज वेल एंड देन वी सी हाउ कंट्रोल सिस्टम विल वर्क इन द फीडबैक कंट्रोल लू सो वी हैव टू ओपन द वॉल वी वन विच इज अ मेन इनपुट वॉल सो वेन यू टर्न द वॉल इन द लाइन विद द एक्चुअल लाइन सो वॉल इज इन ओपन कंडीशन वी वन हैड टू बी ओपन वी टू नीड टू नीड टू बी ओपन एंड वी फोर नीड टू बी ओपन फॉर दिस एंड वी फाइव नीड टू बी ओपन सो दिस इज द वी फाइव वॉल we need to open this as well so v5 wall is open then we have to close rest of other walls which is v6 v7 and v8 which is the drain wall which also we need to close v3 which is bypass wall we have also closed the wall as well now after that we have to connect the air supply to the fi unit like this and open the air supply valve and then we will set the pressure inside the pressure gauge up to 2.5 bar as the 2.5 bar is required to control the electronomatic control valve for this system now i have turned on the air supply from the compressor now in the pressure gauge we need to set the 2.5 bar by regulating the knob of the fi unit just turn it it pull it up and turn it to clockwise the pressure inside the bar will be start increasing here the pressure is almost two bar and this is 2.5 bar so pressure has been set now we move on to the further process for controlling and setting the parameter in the pid controller then we need to set the parameters in the pid controller for this we have to first turn off the main switch then 24 volt power supply on and then pid on after turning on the pid you will see the pid controller starts giving some value now we have to connect the transmitters output to the pid input and pid output to the electromagnetic converter output using patch codes for this we have to connect t1 with t3 t2 with t4 here you can see the input is directly provided now to the pid controller and value which is overloading is now getting some value or the sum amount now connect output of the pid controller to electromagnetic converters supply so as we connected the supply there is output provided to the electromagnetic converter now we have to set the pid controller reading as described in the user manual as well in the user manual we have to set the toggle switch first on the flow position so we will set this toggle switch to the flow position here and now we have to set the pid values in the pid controllers for this we have to press select key for 5 second the channel will channel 1 will be displayed and again when we press select key you will enter in the channel 1 navigate through the up and down keys and you have to enter the pid values i will explain you in the video as well while entering the all parameters in this then press select for 3 to 5 seconds here you have enter the channel 1 menu now if in going inside the channel 1 menu we can press select again and then we reach to the p value for this we have to set the p value according to the navigations and uh, value given in the user manual all the parameters value are also given in the user manual as well you can 
set all the values of PID, hysteresis and other parameters. So we are now going to set all the values according to this parameter list. For this in the parameter we have to provide P value of 40. To change the value press select once you will see start the green value in blinking the actual value of the P and now we will increase the value to 40.6. by using up and down key here so this is 40.6 now press select for entering the value and complete the parameter setup now we are going to the next parameter which is i <coughs> this need to be 11 press select here to change the value so this is 11 again press select for complete the value now for D, we need to set it 2.2. So we turn this to 2.2 here. Now, moving on, next parameter hysteresis need to be 0, which is 0, same. Balance need to be 0. AR need to be 1000. When press select, we need to change this to 1000 it's still not changing because the other parameter inside the channel 6 will need to be changed for this we will again come back to this parameter to change it the reverse action should be no s value set point set value low limit will be 0 and set value high limit will be 500 sorry 1000 so 1000 is still not going because the maximum set permissible value has been need to be changed so we will again come back to this parameter TC1 need to be 1 PLC need to be minus 50 PC, PHC need to be 10. This is 105. P cut 0, alpha 40, and beta 100. So these are the channel 1 parameters that need to be changed and set. Now we for going to the main menu and to main window of the PID controller, just press back button. We have reached the main window. Now we have to change the channel settings in the channel 6 for changing the channel menu just press up and down at here so we have now reached to channel 6 pvt need to be 4 to 20 which is set already pvb need to be 0 and pvf need to be 100 thousand so this is the thousand value will need to be changed this is the maximum setting value if we change this to 500 the maximum high level high level of the flow will be remains the 500 which will not permit to exceed the value of the high level from 500 and AR also auto regulation will also be up to 500 so we need to set the value 1000 and as we set the value 1000 all the parameters in the channel 1 will change according to the 1000 value so we now check and see the parameter in the channel 1 so P ID are set as per the user manual and AR is now 1000 here you can see and S value high will be 1000 again so these two parameters will automatically change by setting the PVF value now parameter setting of the PID controller has been done now we will start the system and start the pump and we will see how the system in closed loop will be work before that I will explain that the setting that we have performed right now in this PID controller is the factory setting and the performance setting for the particular place. This can be changed to place to place according to the factory system and according to your flow or the water density because it will change as per the place and the moment. So you auto tuning function also provided with this complete setup. We will also explain auto tuning while after working with the complete setup and a complete experiment. 
So auto tuning will get all the values automatically according to your water density and water flow so that you can easily change up and the PID values to the PID controller. Now first we have to give the set point to the system. We have already given a set point which is 400 liters per hour for this uh, first experiment and uh, you can give any set point from 0 to 1000 but uh, for starting basis give a set point for the lower reading of up to 500 liters per hour or you can give 600 liters per hour for the best of the reading. So we, for changing the set point use this up and down key the set point will be changed. So we start with the 600 liters per hour. And after giving set point, just press select one time. So the set point will be entered. Now we will turn on the pump and see how the system will start response in the flow. Make sure the wall V1 will be in the complete open flow. We have to maintain the flow about 1000 liters per hour, which will be maximum flow from the system. Now I'll turn on the pump here. And the actual reading from the wheel flow meter is observed and transmitted to the PID controller right now. The reading and the liter per minute is now more than 1000. So we need to set the pump value or the wall position in the rotor meter so that the liters per minute will be approximately 1000 so we need to change the rotor meter value by turning and closing the wall carefully so that's we have almost reached the 1000 liters per hour. You can also observe it in the system as well. PID controller now starts trying to change the flow as per the set point and we are reaching the set point near about which is 600 liters per hour. At this time you can also observe the opening and closing of the electronomatic control wall according to the setup flow and the output deviations right now flow is maintained so system response responding is very low if I change the flow again system will again change here you can see I have increased the flow from the system or flow the wall but the wall position is maintaining the flow near about the set point for giving a disturbance in the flow we can change the set point again to any other value now if I change the set point to 500 and press select you will observe the closing of the wall is changes according to the flow and in one or two cycles the wall will be adjusted its position as per the flow meter and the flow controlling at the rotor meter you can also observe the flow which is the set point and near about the set point Now for better explanation of the working of wheel flow meter and electronomatic controller I have taken a closer shot and again I am going to change the set point of the system and you will see and observe how the wall opening and closing will be going on and changing the flow and flow will be manipulated according to the set point. So right now our set point is 400 you can also observe it in the rotor meter as well that the 400 liters per hour is continuously going on. Now I will increase the set point from 400 to 600 or 700 let us say 
so we are increasing the set point to Seven hundred and press select. As I change the set point, you can observe the wall opening and closing can changing the flow and flow is manipulating according to the set point, new set point. And you can observe in one or two cycle, we are going getting our set point closely as the value set, and this is how the feedback controlling is going on. Here yeah, now we have reached the set point up to 700, and wall position is now set according to the new set point. It will try to maintain the flow till the flow is increasing and decreasing in the system. You can observe the set point is changed to 700 right now, and same set point and set value can be also observed in the rotameter as well. Now we will see the auto tuning of the system as per the setting value. For that, first we have to change the set point to another value. Let us say we will set the set point up to 500 for this system. And to observe the auto tuning, we just need to press the select button one time and go to up and down here this is the AT menu which is for auto tuning now press select and turn it on and again press select as the system is turned on the system will take one or two cycles to check the system flow and values accordingly here you can see and after in some time in some seconds the auto tuning will be automatically done and we will reach to the main window